In the world of aviation, 20 years is an era. After 30, a plane is often decommissioned, and after 50, it's sent off to a museum. But the B-52 Stratofortress strategic bomber has defied all of these laws of time. For over 50 years, it's remained a relevant U.S. combat tool, and thanks to the B-52J modification, it could surpass its 100th year of service. This aircraft has long ceased to be old, becoming the living embodiment of the idea that time can be conquered through engineering. In today's video, we invite you to recall with us why the B-52 is so special as we take a look at the updates this immortal steel giant will receive. On March 15, 1952, the first Stratofortress rolled off the assembly line at Boeing Plant 2 in Seattle, Washington. The massive aircraft weighed over 200 tons and was impressively tall, comparable to a four-story building. Despite numerous design changes along the way, this moment was a triumph not only for Boeing, Pratt & Whitney, but also for the U.S. Air Force, which saw the efforts of all the teams that created this colossus come to fruition, giving the U.S. a second-generation long-range bomber destined to become the cornerstone of the nuclear triad for decades to come. The B-52's development history began with the creation of the B-47, first aircraft of a new generation that became the long-awaited trigger for the U.S. Air Force's transition from the era of piston-engine strategic bombers to a new era of jet engines and swept wings. In addition to swept wings, Boeing's XB-47 also used engine pylons, allowing more fuel to be stored within the wings themselves, a marked contrast to previous aircraft designs whose engines were built into the wings, eliminating the possibility of fuel storage. The new approach not only reduced the weight of the wings, but also greatly simplified the maintenance of the aircraft's engines, and all of the above solutions became an excellent aid to Boeing specialists during the development of the Stratofortress. However, it was not without its own headaches, namely Strategic Air Command (SAC), which too frequently changed its requirements for the future bomber. But by 1948, they'd finally identified the main vector for the second-generation bomber, thus requiring 8,000-mile range with a 4,000-mile combat radius, cruising speed of 550 miles and over 550 miles over the protected area, tactical operating altitude of 45,000 feet, droppable chassis, fully ventilated and self-sealing fuel tanks, the ability to refuel an aircraft in mid-air, the first Stratofortress took to the skies in April 1952, and by June 1955, it had entered service with the 93rd Heavy Bombardment Wing at Castle Air Force Base in California. The V-52 was designed for long-range bombing, but what made it truly a global threat was the introduction of loop hose aerial refueling technology. It immediately began putting its new knowledge into practice as part of Operation Power Flight, conducted in January 1957. It proved that the United States could conduct global bombing operations, deploying nuclear weapons from the Stratofortress at long ranges and safely accomplishing the missions. To forever enter the textbooks and the list of record-breaking aircraft, the Power Flight members had to cover more than 24,325 miles in 45 hours and 19 minutes with several mid-air refuelings by KC-97s. Following this, the B-52 set several more world records, including a closed-circuit speed record of 6,200 and 3,100 miles without payload, and a world record for unrefueled flight distance of over 10,078 miles, and then freshened its own record by flying without refueling for more than 12,532 miles over Seattle, Fort Worth, and the Azores. The bomber's remarkable endurance made it a decisive factor in search missions as just two B-52s could scan an area of 364,000 square kilometers, comparable to the entire area of Japan, and was especially important when working with the U.S. Navy on anti-submarine missions or detecting enemy fleets. But can an aircraft that entered service during the Eisenhower administration compete adequately with the more modern American B-2 Spirit bombers, and especially the newest B-21 Raider? And most importantly, is the cost of upgrading the Stratofortress justified? In short, yes. Its combat versatility has been an undeniable selling point since its debut during the Vietnam War, where the B-52 became a carpet-bombing hero with its ability to drop over 70,547 pounds of explosives on the heads of its enemies. Over time, long-range missiles like the AGM-158 Jassim and the Harpoon anti-ship missile were added to the impressive bombing record, and the bomber's contributions were once again recognized in the international mission against ISIS, during which, before being replaced by B-1s, 
B-52s flew over 1,850 combat sorties, dropping some 12,000 bombs, which proved crucial in defeating the militants in Mosul. But legends also need updates to stay in shape. Boeing made the same decision, unveiling renderings of the updated Stratofortress in the fall of 2022, along with comprehensive plans to upgrade the entire fleet of operational B-52Hs to the B-52J model. And in the spring of 2023, this was confirmed in U.S. Air Force budget documents reviewed in an article by Air and Space Forces magazine. Since the early 1960s, the B-52 has been equipped with the Pratt & Whitney TF-33 turbofan engine. Since nothing lasts forever, these engines, the last of which was built in 1985, had long since reached the end of their service life. And the time had finally come to find a worthy replacement. In April 2020, the U.S. Air Force issued a request for proposals for 608 commercial engines as well as spare parts and support equipment with a contract award expected in the spring of 2021. As part of the Commercial Engine Reengineering Program SERP, companies began offering their solutions to the military. For General Electric, these were the CF-3410 and Passport turbofan engines, Pratt & Whitney proposed the PW800 series of turbofans and Rolls-Royce BR-725 designated F-130. Ultimately, it was the latter that the military liked the most and it was decided to purchase 650 of these engines for $2.6 billion, of which 608 were to be replaced and 42 would remain as spares. Initially, the new engine proposal for the future B-52J modification called for a reduction in engine capacity from 8 to 4. However, it turned out that this reduction would have necessitated additional, more drastic changes to the bomber's systems and control surfaces, including the rudder, which would have had a detrimental effect on the cost and complexity of the project. Interestingly enough, in the renderings presented by Boeing, many noted a slightly modified shape of the aircraft's nose and a pair of fairings removed from underneath it, which were first added to the B-52G and B-52H modifications back in the 1970s. Simply put, it seems like they were trying to return the plane to its classic appearance. The left radome housed the Westinghouse AN AVQ-22 Low Light Level Television LLL TV system. The right radome housed the Hughes AN AAQ-6 Forward Looking Infrared FLIR system. And together, they made up the AN ASQ-151 Electro Optical Viewing System EVS, whose primary responsibility was to ensure crew safety at extremely low altitudes as well as provide some surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities. In addition to design changes, the system had already been somewhat supplanted by modern solutions in the form of targeting pods, whether the Lockheed Martin Sniper or the Northrop Grumman Lightning mounted on pylons under the left wing of the B-52. The new B-52J nose cones will receive the improved AN-APG-79 Acer radar, a slightly smaller version of the radar found on the FA-18EF Super Hornet and EA-18G Growler. The new radar would significantly boost the Stratofortress's airborne early warning capabilities, accuracy, resistance to enemy countermeasures, and overall improve the aircraft's situational awareness. It can support electronic warfare and communications functions, and the bomber's targeting pod will assist the radar in detecting and identifying targets, especially enemy aircraft. The fairings were abandoned, but new small plane humps were discovered on the back of the plane near the junction of the wings and the fuselage, which Boeing declined to comment on. However, based on the design of other aircraft, it can be assumed that these humps are nothing more than broadband satellite communication systems. This is especially true since they've been discussed repeatedly since 2018, when the aging bombers were supposed to receive improved GPS systems and Link-16 data links with new low-frequency LF, very low frequency VLF, and advanced extremely high frequency AEHF communication suites. But one of the key updates to the B-52J modification risks becoming a new pylon for the B-52, increasing its overall carrying capacity. Now, the U.S. Air Force probably appreciates the already insane 70,000 pounds of ordnance each B-52H in the fleet can carry right now. But wouldn't it be even cooler if instead of 5,000 pounds per pylon, each could carry up to 20,000 pounds, thus quadrupling that capacity? Boeing's pylon project, dubbed Hercules, will replace the older external improved common pylon, ICP, which is unfortunately limited to 5,000 pounds of payload. The main goal here is not so much to show off numbers, but to be able to hang the heaviest items on one pylon. 
First and foremost, of course, we're talking about the promising American hypersonic missiles, AGM-183 Air Launch Rapid Response Weapon, Arrow, and hypersonic attack cruise missiles, Hackam. However, the B-52J's pylon certainly won't be limited to just these two types of hypersonic weapons, meaning we'll see even more new developments under the wing of the Stratofortress once it's ready. This payload would be particularly valuable in the event of a conflict in the Pacific region where tens or even hundreds of cruise missiles would be needed for massive attacks on enemy forces. Beyond hypersonic missiles, the B-52J's potential as a nuclear launch platform should not be overlooked. This summer, after years of development, we got our first look at what the U.S. Air Force's new AGM-181A Long Range Standoff LRSO cruise missile, armed with a W-84 nuclear warhead, might look like, replacing the AGM-86B air-launched cruise missile ALCM, that has been in service since the end of the Cold War. Moreover, it's part of the broader long-range strike family of systems, the core of which is the B-21 Raider. But something tells us the military won't ignore the Eternal Guardian B-52J, and it may be under its very wings rather than in the internal compartments of a B-21 that we first see the new munitions. How many more decades do you think the B-52 Stratofortress will be able to defend the skies before it's forced to make way for the younger generation? Share your guesses in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.